Imagine, if you will, an alliance of eight randos of questionable skill all come together to complete the most difficult content in the game. None of them can count, none of them can read, and none of them know left from right. This, my friends, is the Party Finder experience. Hi, I'm Cider Spider, and I play Final Fantasy XIV. Because my ability to play difficult video games defines my self-worth, I set out to complete the newest Savage Raid tier on release. Now, the most hardcore of raiders form regular groups called Statics, which have eight fixed members that raid together at scheduled times. I decided to avoid all that and do the tier on Party Finder. What the heck is Party Finder? Well... Are you an antisocial dweeb with no friends? <laughs> of course you are! I can't believe we have so much in common. Let's, like, walk on the beach or something. So Party Finder is the public listing for raiding parties that anyone can join. You choose your content, you write up a description which no one will ever read, and then you wait for seven random players to jump into your group. Now, Savage Raids are extremely strict and require a great deal of coordination. So how is a ragtag bunch of strangers going to make that work on the fly? Well, if you read the PF description, which you didn't because no one does, you'll know which wacky strats the group is using. And when you queue into the fight, everyone will determine their positions for each mechanic via a series of setup markers. Shut up about macros, I don't care. And once everyone knows where they need to be, you definitely remember to eat your raid food for stat buffs. And the nonsense begins. And what nonsense, indeed. So, with everyone having a predetermined role and position, you would expect the fight to run smoothly because everyone knows what they need to do, right? Yeah, no. Mostly you'll all just flail around, trip over each other, die repeatedly, rage quit, disband the party, and then start all over again. Ad nauseum, ad infinitum. So for me, a baby and a noob, the Abyssos raids are my second ever Savage tier. Pandemonium was my first tier. I crawled my way through the first two fights of it and got carried through the last two. So leading up to Abyssos, I wanted to try and get a more typical experience. Thus the decision to raid in Party Finder. And what a decision it turned out to be. Abyssos, like every FF14 raid tier, consists of four fights which presumably increase in difficulty as you progress. The first of these fights is the Proto Carbuncle. Buff Buncle's mechanics consist of counting to four, counting to eight, counting to two, and counting to WHY IS THE DPS DEAD? Going into this fight on day one, the first thing you'd notice is how much damage the poisons do. Anyone who steps in the toilet water gets poisoned, and with 610 eye level, the toilet water was a death sentence. Naturally, every DPS ever was a toilet-seeking missile, and it was common to lose people even on easy mechanics if the healers couldn't keep up. Which they almost certainly couldn't, because every tank buster also applies poison, meaning the tanks are at a constant state of melting. And they can also step in the toilet water and double melt, and I already hate my life, please make it stop! Following several sewage-related accidents, you're pretty much screwed when the mini-toilets spawn because you need everyone alive to jump in and clog them up to prevent fecal annihilation. Everyone calls this mechanic puddles, and if you ever join a party that's doing YOLO puddles, then leave immediately because it's 100% a trap. So, after a few rounds of getting tank busted, toilet watered, and knockback memed, Brodo Carbuncle hits you with a memory check that requires an elementary school level of awareness, which filters out 95% of people in Party Finder, which includes me about 50% of the time. If you manage to get through that and the simple stack spread mechanics afterward, you'll soon be greeted by the mechanic that filters out 99% of people in Party Finder, 99% of the time. Tail to Claw. It's really difficult. You have to, like, be in front of him and then be behind him and... Sorry, I meant DEVOUR. Devour is an extremely easy mechanic that everyone will mess up every time for no good reason. If you're looking for an excuse to uninstall the game and or lose all faith in humanity permanently, Devour has got you covered. Covered. In shit. So Devour is a very simple movement mechanic wherein the boss is untargetable. This means that you don't have to do any damage. You don't have to press any buttons. You have no distractions from the basic movements required. And yet, if you're raiding in Party Finder, you will be walled on this mechanic indefinitely. Why? I don't know. No one knows. Please, just stop getting stepped on. Here's how Devour works. The professional gnarly uncle is going to play hopscotch around the arena in a pattern shown to you via this weird tooth marker. He'll jump eight times and all you have to do is not be under him when he lands. And here's the real kicker. There are only two different patterns he can jump in. It'll either be four jumps clockwise followed by four jumps counterclockwise or two clockwise, four counter, two clockwise. Now you would think that second pattern was the hard one, but no! When he does 242, also known as zigzag, all you have to do is wait out of the way for his first three jumps to go off. After that, the first landing zone is a safe spot for the rest of the mechanic. Very easy. And for the 4-4 pattern, there are all these stupid so-called brain-dead strats and diagonal movements and stupid crap, and I personally just count the jumps while running opposite him. Works every time. It's easy. But here's the thing. 
If you get hit by one of the jumps, you're stunned for the duration of the mechanic and get insta-killed. And here's the other thing, when the boss stops jumping, you have to clog toilets again or everyone dies. This means that if more than one person fails Devour, you'll all die to complete fecal saturation. Devour is only about halfway through the fight, but pretty much every other mechanic is a blur since once you find a group that can clear Devour, you usually clear the fight shortly thereafter. From here on out, it's just different variations of stuff you already did, so if you've proven your ability to count, stack, and spread, then the Protein Carbuncle is all but defeated. That was pretty much my experience anyway. I cleared the fight in the first 24 hours by joining a clear party shortly after learning Devour, and I generally recommend that approach since every other party is a Devour party, and most clear parties probably are too. So, if the first fight hasn't swallowed you whole and you haven't been chewed up and spit out by Party Finder yet, then maybe you're the kind of masochist that's cut out for Savage Raiding after all. So then what comes next? Welcome to P6S, idiot. This fight only has one mechanic. Almost nothing else matters except for that one mechanic, but I guess I still have to talk about pathogenic cells anyway. It's almost verbatim the Flood Raise mechanic from Diamond Weapon X, but if you ask anyone in PF, they'll call it Limit Cut because every mechanic with numbers is apparently Limit Cut since that was the first time it was used. I bet these are the kind of people that call tissues Kleenex and plasters Band-Aids. Limit Cut is nothing like pathogenic cells. I will die on this hill, and chances are it's because someone who couldn't count overlapped me with their number. That's pretty much all you need to know about this mechanic. There's also Exchange of Agonies, which pops up a few times. It's the easiest thing ever, but you're gonna die to it a lot, so it's worth mentioning. Most of the party gets a debuff marker over their head, and some of them are tethered together. If your debuff is tethered, it'll swap with the one it's connected to. If it's not tethered, it's exactly what it says on the tin. So donuts stack with the wacky stack, and donut holes GTFO to avoid murdering everyone. It's both simple and really easy, but because it's Party Finder, I can guarantee with 100% certainty that somebody will set you up the bomb. Now then, on to the only actual mechanic in the fight. General ill health with emaciation usually occurring in association with cancer or chronic infectious disease. Cacaxia? Cacaxia. Wait, that's how it's pronounced? You know, that's pretty apt. So yeah, prepare to be cucked over and over again, because that's basically the only mechanic you'll ever see in Party Finder. There's a bunch of BS with swapping AoE markers and debuff swaps and blah blah blah. Realistically, every mechanic in this fight is easy, but then you get to cuck one and everyone dies because this mechanic requires the extremely difficult task of counting to four. Much like almost every mechanic in this game, all you need to be able to do is count in order to complete it. When Hegemami cucks you, everyone will get a pair of debuffs. You'll get a snake or a wing debuff and a timer. The timer will be either 8, 12, 16, or 20, and when the timer runs out, you'll get hit with a magic AoE. After the 16 second timer ends, Huge Mom will proceed to walk all over you as it turns out that is in fact what her boots are made for. She'll proceed to stomp on the faces of the two players nearest her and the physical attack swaps your snake or wing debuff to the opposite one. But if it hits you more than once, you'll be boot scooting your way directly to the Shadow Realm, i.e. dead. So the snake or wing debuff means you're vulnerable to that thing and need to be on the other side of the boss for her feet picks to not kill you. Thus, purples go west, greens go east, and you wait out the magic AoEs while taking turns eating physical AoEs, all the while making sure to not overlap them. Making sure to not overlap them. Making sure to not overlap them. Making sure to- So everyone eats their AoEs, and then you just ensure you're on the opposite side to where you started for the Terra Ixo cast, and you win. Congratulations! Now you've beat the only mechanic in the fight. She'll cast a bunch more swappy garbage and do variations of the same mechanics, but it's pretty much all a blur after cuckoldry. But wait a minute. Hegemami has already cucked you once. Does that not imply that she's going to cock you again? Well, yeah, but everyone in PF just tank LBs that mechanic, so who cares? As long as you use protection, you'll never have any trouble with Cuck 2. But what if we want to do the mechanic correctly? Well, Cuck 2 is actually even easier than Cuck 1, but good luck convincing Party Finder of that. But for posterity, I'll give you the quick version. Mommy cucks you with a purple or green debuff, then she hits you with a gnarly snake or wing infection, then she casts polyaliaminoid, then two people get stack markers and two people get AoEs, green debuffs go east, purple debuffs go west, wing space into the party, snake space away, there will always be four safe squares either like this or like this, stacks go to the north squares, AoEs go south, everyone takes minimal damage, it's easy. Wait a minute, this is a funny video, not a guide. So Mountain Dews go east and Purple Drinks go west to avoid Mommy's cuck rays. Wingdings look toward their teammates to avoid shitting and farting on everyone, while Slytherins look away from the team to safely spit that crazy mad fire. You play some Polyaminoid Minesweeper to find the safe spots, and then everyone explodes and dies. Crap, I wish we had just used the tank LB, but there was no gauge because I had to use it to revive everyone after they failed the first cuck. Screw this fight, I'm over it. Did someone say P7S? No, no one said that. P7S. Did someone say P7S? Oh boy, it's time for P7S! Uh, this one's pretty underwhelming. It's a pretty chill and fun fight, but there's nothing too special about it. But what the heck does Sleepo, Perg, Hector, Famine, JP, Death, All Far War even mean? 
I don't know, every single strat is pretty much the same anyway. So you party up and queue in. The year is 2006. You're chopping willow logs behind Drainer Bank with your brand new rune axe. All of a sudden, your axe head breaks. You realized it far too late. This is no ordinary willow tree. This is... The end. Uh, GG, idiot. Now you'll never cut a tree again. So you take your broken rune axe to a free-to-play world and pretend it's a rare item and some noob buys it for 100k. Congratulations! Now you can afford to get your armor trimmed. I feel like I'm getting sidetracked. So anyway, P7S. Basically nothing happens in this fight until the last 25%. The money tree is pissed and it's hurling fruit at you left and right. All the buff windows happen on movement mechanics and your tanks, ironically, are the ones made of paper. Up until a cast called Purgation, this fight is trivial. Then all the PF wall mechanics happen back to back right before Enrage. So first up is Purgation, which is where the Sleepo strat comes into play. Everyone gets a bunch of stack and spread debuffs and you basically just play Red Rover until they're all gone. But also everyone is non-stop exploding and the Brain Tree is simultaneously casting Explodo Your Face So not once, not thrice, but two times. The entire thing is a non-stop heal and mitt check, but otherwise it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Once you get the hang of it. Once you get the hang of it. So then there's some other filler mechanics and you come up on Famine's Harvest. Uh, I don't know what it has to do with famine or harvesting, but basically a bunch of jacked minotaurs beat the hell out of you with sticks. People with tethers stand opposite their tether and people without tethers bait cones away from the party. Easy. Next up is Death Harvest. Everyone uses the JP Easy strat for this wherein you have a set spot that you always go to, which is relative to the Yak platform. You slap on some mitts, your tanks stack up an invuln, and everyone lives the end easy. Finally, there's War's Harvest. And by war, I mean birds, yaks, and minotaurs that hatched out of fruit eggs beating the hell out of you with sticks. If have yak tether, fan out on bridge like the Chad Man. If not have yak tether, go to opposite side of it and chill like the Chad Man. Easy. And that's pretty much it. Shockingly, most of the strats for these mechanics are PF proof, and this fight wasn't bad at all. I cleared it week one like a buff Chad, and the only difficult part was hitting the DPS check at min eye level with an anti try hard team. It took a solid energy drain only run to squeak across the finish line about 0.01 seconds before enrage in the last instance before weekly reset, but you better believe I got that week one clear. Week one. Clear. So surely P8S will only take another week or two, right? 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 I'll, uh, well, I'll let you know once I've done it, but I'll give you a taste of what P8S Prog is like in PF. Imagine, if you will, a nest of flame vipers. Yes, flaming vipers. Everyone tells you these myths and legends of enrage of a part two of such grandiose things as fourfold fires and centaur too. You strain your eyes and look to the horizon, but you don't see any such things. You see only snakes. Snakes as far as your little eyes can see. You made extra sure to actually check the PF description. Manifold Prog? Snakes. Fourfold Flames? Snakes. Reflection 2? Snakes. Enrage to clear snakes. P2 fresh snakes. P2 clear snakes. It's only snakes. There is no P2. There's no Enrage. There is no Prog. All parties are snake one parties. The entire fight is snakes and yelling and yelling about snakes. Please, gods, have mercy on my tiny soul. One like equals one yell. Okay, bye.